This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ryfield Sheridan, Kinetics F104, Panda's Paladin, and Bobcat's Beagle. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video that takes a look at some of the latest kits. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. We are glad you could join us. Let's get started with Ryefield's 135th scale M551A1 Sheridan. This is the modernized version of the U.S. Airborne Armored Vehicle with new sighting equipment that served after Vietnam. Including deployments to Panama and Desert Shield and Desert Storm. The lower hull comprises a belly and separate sides with sponson plates. Additional plates are given for bolster belly and side armor. The suspension includes fine arms and shock absorbers for sharply molded road wheels, idlers, and drive sprockets. Polycaps should leave the idlers and sprockets movable, which will ease installation of the Lincoln length tracks. The upper hull features rivets, recessed panel lines, filler caps, an open hatch for the driver, engine screens, and engine access cover that holds tools. Also separate are the flotation barrier covers and the surfboard up front. The turret has lower and upper halves with side inserts, loader's hatch, and detailed commander's cupola with posable hatch, as well as a 50 caliber M2 machine gun, including mount, gun shield, and rear armor. Other features include the bustle rack and two styles of smoke launcher. The main gun has a two-piece barrel with optional muzzle plug. Behind the cast mantlet is the gun's breech, coaxial machine gun, and guard. A spring inside gives the gun recoil. Clear plastic supplies vision blocks and periscopes, light lenses, and the driver's vision port in the surfboard. Photo etch brass is used for engine screens, bustle rack mash, muzzle rifling, straps, and brackets. A small decal sheet and the color diagram show markings for two 82nd Airborne Sheridans, one in desert sand from the Gulf War, the other in NATO camo from the invasion of Panama. There is plenty of detail here, and if you are looking for a modern Sheridan, then this is the kit for you. What is up with the lights? Not sure. Let me check the wires. Oh, here's the problem. Good. Ah! Wow. Well, after all that, let's take a look at Kinetics 148 scale F-104G. This is the fighter bomber version of Lockheed's Starfighter, many of which served in European air wings. The kit has decals for German F-104s in the 1980s. Surface detail on the parts is extremely fine recessed panel lines, vents, and scoops. The Starfighter's characteristic stubby wings are molded in upper and lower halves, marked with more fine recessed panel lines and rivets. The leading edge flaps are separate, as are the ailerons. Tabs on the trailing flaps allow them to be posed up or down. The horizontal stabilizer is a single thin part with a separate fin top, and the rudder is also posable. The two-part nose, with probe, covers a detailed radar unit with dish. Cockpit parts include a tub with detailed floor and consoles, back wall, instrument panel, shroud, controls, and multi-part Martin Baker ejection seat. Parts for a Lockheed C2 seat on the trees indicate more versions of the F-104 are forthcoming. Behind the cockpit is an avionics bay that can be posed open. Other features include intakes with internal sleeves and shot cones, jet pipe with rear engine fan and flame holder, and exhaust nozzle. An unused one is also on the tree. There are also posable speed brakes, detailed nose, gear well, and main wheel bay with detailed gear legs and bulge tires. Stores include wingtip tanks and underwing drop tanks. A pair of sidewinders is on the trees, but they're not called for. Clear parts provide the posable canopy, lights, and HUD glass. A small photo etch brass fret supplies seat harness, wingtip details, and canopy latches. Cartograph decals provide markings for four German fighter bombers, three Luftwaffe, and one from the German Navy. The parts and decals look great, and this should be a fun build. You know, something feels off. Something doesn't feel right. I feel it too. Well, well, this can't be right. Why was this unplugged? All right, let's see how this goes. Anyway, let's take a look at Panda's 135th scale M109A7. This is the latest variant of the U.S. self-propelled howitzer. It's a modernization of the A6 variant using mechanical components from the Bradley. 
This is Panda's first kit of the M109 family, and it's the first time we've seen the A7 in scale. The lower hull is mostly a single part with molded panels, weld seams, suspension attachments, and front panel. The last receives tow hooks, lights, and mud flaps. The separate rear panel gets more hooks and lights, and a posable door with detail outside and in, although there's no interior detail to speak of. Making up the suspension are arms with detail on both sides for finely molded road wheels with separate tires as well as idlers and drive sprockets. The tracks are individual metal links with separate center guides, all joined with metal rods so they should be workable. Features of the one-piece upper hull include molded non-skid, engine louvers, armor mounting bosses, and access hatches molded in place. The driver's hatch and buttoned up position appears to be posable, but it's not clear from the instructions. The instructions also omit the driver's vision blocks. They are part C76. Among the details on the front, including hinges and equipment, is a posable travel lock for the gun. The turret consists of a lower section with clips to fit the race, and a beautifully molded upper section with tie downs, closed and open hatches, bosses, bolts, and handles. Most of the hatches are designed to be shown closed, but the commander's hatch can be posed open. The big howitzer is provided in halves that include the bore evacuator and the muzzle brake. It fits into the complicated mantlet that should be movable. Other turret features are multiple jerry cans, the large turret box with side-mounted racks, antennas, sighting equipment, combat identification panels, and optional 50 caliber machine gun or 40 millimeter grenade launchers for the commander's hatch mount or you can fit a crow's unit on the roof. There are clear light lenses and vision blocks, photo etch brass for stowage basket mesh, and some brackets and details, and a resin soldier carrying around. A small decal sheet supplies markings for two sand-colored paladins. If you like modern armor, this is the kit for you. Yep, but you know what I don't dig? Hmm. This whole turnabout intruder thing. Really? I was kind of enjoying it. Hmm. But I'm done with it. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on here. Let's see what this does. Fine. What the? Boy, are you ever going to be in trouble. Eh, perhaps, but the show must go on. Our final kit is Bobcat's 148 scale Illusion IL-28. Known to NATO as the Beagle, this was the first Soviet jet bomber and entered service in 1950. The aircraft was widely exported to countries in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. China acquired several and then built hundreds of its own as the H-5. Bobcat's kit provides parts to build the torpedo bomber version. This is the first injection molded plastic kit of the IL-28 in 148 scale. Let's take a look. Yes, let's. Surface detail on the airframe parts includes consistent recessed panel lines and petite rivets. The wing's upper and lower halves include separate inboard sections underneath and separate ailerons and flaps. Sturdy spars help attach the wings to the body. The horizontal stabilizers are molded with the elevators, and most of the vertical tail comes in halves with a posable rudder. Also separate is the tail gun position with pressure bulkhead, controls and seat, turret components, guns and controls. Also inside the fuselage is the cockpit with floor and back wall, consoles and instrument panel, controls, and seat. Forward is the navigator slash bombardier's position with controls, scopes, and seat. Clear parts with well-defined frames will reveal the nose and tail positions, and optional parts allow for the hinge canopy to be posed open. The wing-mounted engines are housed in six-part pods, including one-part exhaust surrounds. The long jet pipes, high detailed rear fans. Out front between vertical supports, there are intake center bodies that should hide the absence of Klimov turbojets behind them. Nose wheel and main gear bays with detailed doors and sharply molded legs and wheels round out the Beagle except for stores, which include wingtip tanks and a choice of two 45-36 conventional torpedoes or two rocket-powered RAT-52 torpedoes. Decals and marking diagrams show options for nine IL-28Ts, six Soviet and three Chinese. This looks impressive in the box. It'll be interesting to see how it goes together. Look for reviews of the Beagle, Sheridan, Starfighter, and Paladin in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And there are more new products in the November issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I think I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I am pretty fed up with the shifting reality shenanigans. Here. I think I know how to fix it.
Oh, son of a... Aaron, you just don't trip over your lines and I like that normally. Shut up, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a modernized version of the A6 variant with, I'm sorry, I'm screwing this up. Yeah. And I've got people, now there are people walking by to look. Look, I am pretty fed up with the shifting reality shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs>